What's going on Dolphins fans? As I made the video on, I believe, Tuesday, <clears throat> I was asking the question, should the Dolphins fire Josh Boyer? Well, it looks like Mike McDaniel and Chris Greer came to the conclusion that that was the best move. So this video, I'm going to break down why he got fired and then the top candidates to replace him. And I'm going to be doing further videos as well. Uh, please check out the dolphinsdive.com. It's my merch shop. I got 20% off, use code playoffs uh, off anything on the site. Uh, I just want to do a quick little plug. It mean a lot to me if you checked it out. I'm going to hop right into the video. So, Dolphins fired Josh Boyer, outside linebacker coach Ty McKenzie, outside line, assistant outside linebacker coach Steve Ferenc, and then safety coach Steve Gregory. This all kind of coincides to the information I received from inside the building, uh, specifically about the safety coach. Uh, there was rumors that players were saying they weren't being coached very well and that the previous coaching staff, in terms of the position coaches, taught them uh a lot more and these guys weren't really coaching them as much so that kind of makes sense why they were departed josh boyer with the time i honestly didn't know what was going to happen with as time went on i thought there was a chance he was going to keep his job and honestly would have been too upset because he did play uh, better towards the end of the season but this all makes sense josh josh boyer was forced upon mcdaniel so it makes sense for him to fire him move on and pick his own guy um, and there's a lot of good candidates but the reason Josh Boyer got fired, obviously the defense struggled for most of the season until really the end of the year. And I kind of had a feeling uh, in the end of season press conference when um, Mike McDaniel was asked about Josh Boyer's job security, he didn't even mention Josh Boyer. He was just like, oh, I was proud of how the defense fought at the end. And he didn't mention Boyer. So that was kind of a little red flag there that I thought Boyer could be on the chopping block. Um, but we were in the back half of defense and basically every major category turnovers were down our third de third down defense was terrible and once again he did deal with key injuries in the back end in a defense that is very secondary reliant but also if you see how our defense is built with byron jones likely out we have a lot of dogs up front so we need a defensive coordinator who's going to maximize their potential by putting them in positions to succeed um, and give them good pass rush lanes make sure that people aren't getting double teamed and give them a good opportunity to get after the passer. So that's what I'm going to look for in a new defensive coordinator. There's a lot of potential candidates. Obviously, the top guy that comes to mind is Vic Fangio. He's as safe as you can get. You, he's basically a home run hire. You know you're hiring him. He, he runs a similar style of defense, so we have the right personnel for him. And he's going to have guys cooking. Whether it just, just the way he calls defense, dude, is a mastermind. We saw firsthand when we played Denver uh, to his rookie year. He locked us up. Obviously, Tua didn't have the best playmakers, but just the way he adjusts his his personnel and he'll run man coverage, but have it so that it, it just it's very intricate, but also high level. Um, and if you remember, until he got fired with the Broncos, that defense was always good. It was the offense that let him down. So if you give a good offense with Vic Fangio's defense with the players we have, and Jalen Phillips, Christian Wilkins, Zach Sealer, Manuel Agba, Bradley Chubb reuniting with Fangio. Uh, Xavier hopefully performs better. Javon Holland, kind of similar to his Justin Simmons uh, back there in Denver. So we have a lot of big pieces. I think Vic Fangio would be able to maximize. There's a couple other names uh, I'm going to mention, but I'm going to emphasize a boy for a little longer. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, wasn't he, he wasn't dealt the best hands in terms of key injuries, but just they weren't able to respond quick enough. The amount of third and longs that we would let up was just, Un, unimaginable like it was like third and 15 you're like all right we're getting off the field nope so that's that's i think the biggest reason why uh someone brought it to my attention today actually that the third down defense in terms of conversion rate was the same as last year but it just didn't this year it just didn't feel like we were getting off the field as much uh our run defense was tremendous but i honestly equate that a lot to the players the amount of times you'd see wilkins and sealer in the backfield so <clears throat> I think this is the right move. Obviously, only time will tell. But uh, other potential candidates, I could see to replace him. And I'm going to do multiple videos, probably just on specific candidates, but also maybe just uh, a whole video on all the potential candidates as well. Um, but it is actually interesting because the Dolphins could potentially convert to an even front team or a 4-3 base team. So four down linemen, three linebackers. Um, and currently, we're more of a 3-4 base team, odd front. So... We have the nose tackle. We have the big defensive ends and Wilkins and Sealer usually play those positions. And then you have the outside backers who pass rush. And uh, that's what the, the role Chubb and 
Phillips has been in, but they can both uh, play five techniques down at the line of scrimmage as well. So <clears throat> I'm curious how they want to pursue that. McDaniel's been sh with Shanahan every step of the way, and they've been a primary um, even front team where they like that four down linemen, let those four guys get after the passer, rarely blitz and just let your guys cook, uh, and then mix up the coverage on the back end. They obviously started this whole defense was with the cover three Seattle, but then obviously everybody ran that, and then people found out how to expose it. So now they've adjusted even further where they're mixing they're mixing up the coverages way more. So it's not just cover three, they're mixing in match coverage and uh, split field coverages. So it's, it's getting pretty complex, and you mirror that with the a good pass rush, it's, it's tough to see. Like, look at San Fran. That's exactly what they're doing. So it should be interesting to see how they pursue that. Are they going to stick with the current kind of system? Not system, because it's different. Each system is different. But in terms of the base personnel, I'm curious how they go about that. If they do switch uh, to a 4-3, there's going to be some key p like pieces that are going to be moved on from, from those tackles to tweeners in terms of linebackers who – aren't big enough to play defensive end but can't play linebacker so should be interesting to see what they do there that kind of comes down to we'll see how the personnel gets used but assuming i'm assuming we'll probably stay with the same personnel Vic fangio should be top of the list obviously he was rumored to be with sean payton but sean payton might not even take a job and if he does it's likely to be with denver and i highly doubt Vic fangio wants to go back with denver with the guys that fired him and i think Patton's still there who made that decision so I highly doubt we see, or was Patton there? I don't know if Patton was the one responsible for Fangio, but still, usually head coaches don't go back to the organization that fired them. So uh, I saw him, he interviewed for the Falcons uh, defensive coordinator job, and there's no way Vic Fangio takes the Falcons DC job over the Dolphins just from a competitive advantage. Like you're like, do I want to go to the Falcons <clears throat> who have Grady Jarrett and AJ Terrell, who's a stud, and then... I don't know. Obviously, I'm being a little ignorant. I'm sure they have more players that just aren't clicking, but Dolphins have more firepower. going to be a much more competitive team. I feel like we're the ideal landing spot for Fangio. Obviously, if he doesn't, he could go to Minnesota as well, but uh, hopefully we get Fangio. If not, some other names that uh, we could potentially go after, Mike Zimmer, uh, Ijiro Evero, if he doesn't get a head coaching job, Steve Wilkes, if he doesn't stay with the Panthers, Joe Woods got fired as the Browns DC. I don't necessarily see him coming on for us as a DC, but he does have a connection to McDaniel. Um, those are the five names I've written down, but like I said, I'm gonna have future videos where I go much more in depth on specific candidates as well as the whole candidate pool as a whole. But that's gonna be it for the video. Please comment down below your top candidates and who you'd like this Dolphins see hires defensive coordinator. Uh, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Until next time, I'll catch y'all.